think that um, relevant technology is um, technology that can be you know, apply um, in companies, right? Whether it's uh, the behind the scene technology that can allow you to find your next taxi ride. Uh, it could be cutting edge technology uh, that goes into making your next uh, home service robot uh, to help you clean up your house, for example. Combination many factors, uh, it's both an art and a science, um, but that's what make, a, make our job interesting. Hi, I'm Jenny Lee, Managing Partner at GGV Capital. We are a um, venture capital firm. Uh, they invest both in the US and China. We manage 3.8 billion across um, uh, both the region and we invest multi-stage, from early stage to mid to late stage. The number one criteria that we look at is basically the founder, product and market fit. So we want to make sure that the founder has the right DNA. He's developing a product that he is passionate, he understands, and addressing a market that actually makes sense. So those are broadly speaking um, the key criteria. And then in addition, obviously, we look at the individual, right? We look at the CEOs, we look at his profile, we look at his ability to build a team, we look at the team, we look at if they have the right, if they are trying to build the next robotics company, then obviously the team needs to have the right combination of technology, hardware engineers, software engineers, and then the ability to market their product as well. It will invest at very early stage when it's one entrepreneur, one founder with an idea all the way to a complete team when they're generating revenue. So in that sense that um, for very early stage we actually meet a lot of companies. Um, probably on a yearly basis we meet between 2,000 to 3,000 companies and obviously these are individuals with ideas. And then on the mid to later stage um, the, the, the number of companies would come down. Uh, these are companies at series A, B, C at different stages. So on average, uh, in the mid to later stage, we probably meet about you know, a thousand companies both in the US and China combined. Uh, and, but on an annual basis, uh, we invest anywhere from 30 to 40 companies. Uh, and yes, so, so we meet a lot of companies in various vertical, both in US and China market. Our hope is to find you know, that 30 to 40 companies that hopefully can, that can become you know, the giants for, for tomorrow. I think that the BATs definitely, um, you know, these are the BATs in China, right? So they hold um, huge market share in e-commerce to search, and then of course Tencent uh, in the whole social area. Um, I don't think that these uh, companies are satisfied with a large market. They are operating in a large market. They have huge market share in that large market. Um, but knowing the founders, the founders are still founders at the company. The founders are still CEO at the company. Um, they have huge market cap. They have a lot of cash. And I think they're still young. So the, the leaders are actually ambitious uh, and they, we do see that they will expand. Um, the expansion is going to be more global. Southeast Asia is a very natural extension given that there are similarities in terms of the use case, similarities in how emerging economy adopt internet right, to, to China. Uh, and so we would see them increasing their activity in terms of M&As to buy talent, local companies that are synergistic to their ecosystem. Uh, and then obviously, if they don't acquire uh, or build, they are going to invest. And so we also see a lot of investment opportunities and investment um, um, that they have started to deploy outside of uh, the China market. Uh, I think it's not just Southeast Asia. Um, Alibaba, Tencent in, in particular actually have spent time in the US. So they are going after the US market as well. I'm not sure if they would be successful, but I think they will try. Um, and I, I give them credit uh, for trying. I think that uh, it's always a tough question. <laughs> when people think about innovation, they think about the US. Right, they think about Silicon Valley it has the hub for innovation. I think that um, China is catching up. Uh, I think that Southeast Asia, probably depending on which country, <laughs> would have a different pay, uh, pace of growth as well. Um, but China is catching up because the mobile market, the mobile internet market for China is right now the largest mobile market globally. It's twice the size of the US market. Um, China has about 700 million mobile smartphone users. US has about 300. Southeast Asia combined, maybe 10-20 million. India, 150 million. 
right? So just from the base of mobile internet users, you can see that when the market is huge, it does give rise to more innovation. Uh, and so in China, we can have innovation like WeChat. You can have um, even, um, you know, where, when we talk about artificial intelligence as well, you also have companies like the BATs, Baidu in particular, spending efforts in artificial intelligence, coming out with smart bots and autonomous driving. That front, I think China is on par, uh, if not you know, at slightly ahead of the US in some areas, and maybe slightly behind in other areas, right? So, but roughly on par. I think that Southeast Asia has to do a better catch up uh, game. I think Southeast Asia, uh, particularly I would say Singapore, uh, is trying to ensure that the community that we have of startup um, of you know, capital to support those startups as well as regulation. Uh, we have seen a lot of progress in the last two years, but I think more needs to be done uh, to ensure that the ecosystem is robust and that we can continue to attract talent from the rest of the world. Because without the right talent, the best startup will not be able to grow um, to a level and size that can compete with the competitors from China and the US. Today, we live in a very global economy. And so if you don't disrupt yourself, the players from other countries are going to come, right? And so uh, it's really hard to talk about innovation by itself, by region. Uh, it's very important to understand that the competition is on a global basis. And so I think government has to do their part uh, to ensure that the ecosystem is healthy as well. <laughs>